Hey everyone, lately I've been hearing a lot of chatter about the buy-to-let property market being dead. People are saying you'd be crazy to invest in property right now, especially with labour in power. So I dug into the numbers and let me tell you, the statistics are quite alarming. Right now, almost half of UK landlords have tried to sell their property in the last 12 months. In London, 98% of estate agents have reported that at least one of their landlords is selling a property at the moment. And according to HMRC annual returns, between 100,000 to 150,000 landlord properties exited the market over the last year. So there's clearly a massive problem and many landlords are suffering, but why? Why are landlords selling their properties? Isn't property investment how many make millions? I mean, I thought 90% of millionaires invest in property, don't they? In this video, I'm going to reveal the reasons why landlords are suffering and share tips to soften the blow if you're one of those panicking, panicking landlords. Better yet, I'll show you how to make a success of it so you don't need to sell at all. If you have any interest in property investing, this information is crucial. But first, why does this matter to me? Well, I've spent over a decade now building a UK-wide home buying company, an estate agency, and my own personal property portfolio. So not only does that give me insider knowledge, but it also means that reading the market correctly is essential for not only my livelihood, but that of my clients. So what's happening with the rental market right now? Well, let's break it down. Average rents for new lets have increased by 6.6% over the past year, down from a high of 16% in October 2021, while wages have only increased by 5.6%. So rent is still growing faster than wages on average. Competition for properties is unbelievably high, with 15 households chasing every rental home at the moment. That's over double the pre-pandemic average of six families chasing a property, six households. Demand for rental homes is actually down at 25% from last year, but is still double what it was pre-pandemic. So although demand is slowing, it is still drastically ahead of pre-pandemic levels. Luckily, supply has increased 18%, but again, it's still 33% lower than pre-pandemic levels. So although it's clear things are heading in the right direction for renters with a lot more rental properties coming to the market and less demand than a year ago, it is still drastically imbalanced from where it was pre-pandemic. So what does this all mean? Well, in short, one, 6.6% rent increases are really hurting renters. Two, demand for renting has decreased 25% and the supply of properties has increased 18%. And three, Zoopla predicts rent growth will slow to about 5% this year. So why are landlords selling? If rents are rising and still expected to keep growing, why are landlords leaving the market? Well, there are three key reasons for this. Firstly, rising mortgage rates. In a survey of 2,000 landlords, almost 78% blamed rising mortgage rates for selling. While rent increases can obviously offset higher mortgage payments for some, it's not going to be the case for everyone. Some landlords aren't maybe that savvy, you know, savvy enough to raise rents. Some can't due to existing tenant contracts and others risk their properties becoming uncompetitive if they do raise rents. Secondly, Section 21 evictions. Now, for those who don't know, Section 21 allows landlords to evict tenants without giving a reason. The Rental Reform Bill was expected to scrap Section 21, but the Rent Reform Bill was scrapped ahead of the election. But in reality, it makes no difference anyway, as Labour have made it pretty clear they are immediately abolishing Section 21. Many landlords are evicting tenants now rather than facing a more complex eviction process later. Currently, a tenant is served Section 21 eviction notice every eight minutes. But I thought, before I get into the third final reason that is the cherry on the cake at the moment for why landlords are leaving the market, 
If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate you subscribe or at the very least like this video. It really keeps me motivated to keep making these for you. Anyway. Well, the third reason is the Labour government plans for the private rental sector, which includes, like I mentioned, Section 21 evictions being abolished, as I mentioned just a minute ago. Tenants being given the powers to challenge unreasonable rent rises. Rental properties will need to meet new energy efficiency standards by 2030. And also AWAB's law, which requires social landlords to address dangerous hazards such as mold will be extended to the private rental market. For those of you that don't know about Awab's law, sadly, Awab Ishak passed away just after his second birthday as a result of prolonged exposure to mold in his home. But the law, for some bizarre reason, only applies to social housing, not the private rented sector, which to be honest, just seems ridiculous. So look, I'm a landlord and think all of these changes are sensible and should have been acted a long time ago in reality. But the problem is not all landlords think it's worth the hassle. But how does this impact tenants? Although it might seem like rent growth is slowing and more landlords leaving the market is good for tenants in the short term, it's creating a longer term rental supply problem. I often hear renters say that landlords exiting the market will mean more properties to buy, less competition and more affordable house prices. Look, while this logic makes complete sense, the high interest rates hurting landlords are also making it tough for renters to buy. Yes, house price growth is slowing and renters who can afford to buy are in a buyer's market right now. But for those still needing to rent, the situation is likely to get even harder. Why? Well, because there's a shrinking pool of rentals available as more landlords leave the market. A survey found that 73% of renters reported finding a property to rent was one of the most stressful things they had ever done. So what's the reality? One, renters who could afford to buy now are gonna be better off long-term. Renters unable to buy will be worse off long-term. And landlords who can weather the tough climate will be better off long term. Landlords who can't weather the climate are those that are selling up. And reality is they're cashing in on increased property values anyway, so they're hardly losing out. How can the government help? Are there policies and regulations that might help? For example, the mortgage guarantee scheme for 95% mortgages is helping. It allows homeowners, home movers, to need as little as a 5% deposit making it easier for tenants to buy homes, which is great. I do think Labour are right to improve standards for tenants. It should have been done a long time ago, but there needs to be a bigger focus on increasing the supply of new properties into the market to offset rising demand. In conclusion, it's clear landlords are selling for good reasons, but does that mean buy to let is dead? No, it's an inflection point. Tenants who can get on the housing ladder will win. Landlords with well-run portfolios will win. Tenants who can't buy will struggle more. And landlords exiting the market may not feel like winners, but they often haven't lost money due to property value increases anyway. For tenants ready to buy, now is the time. The market is a buyer's market and prices have dropped from last year, but are probably gonna start increasing faster. For landlords or aspiring property investors, now is the time to learn and build a portfolio designed to last. The days are gone that you can buy anything and make money. You need to pick your investments wisely and most importantly, pick property investments you can actually add value to. I'll see you in the next video.